Yo, bro. Yo, bro. Yo, bro. What's up? Big weekend, dude. Just got back from a big weekend. Big weekend, bro. What's up with you, dude? How are you feeling? I slept 11 hours last night. <laughs> I feel so good, bro. You I was it. sitting on the couch. Uh, you know, we, we watch a little. We're, we're watching Game of Thrones right now. You know, we haven't watched uh, any of the content. We watched it like weekly as it came out when like starting on season three. Okay. And we haven't watched any of those episodes since watching the, the live versions. So it's been a really long time. Okay. Uh, so it's been fun to go back through and it'll be fun until we get towards the end and then it will be less fun. Oh, but, man. Uh, you know, we're sitting on the couch chilling, uh, eating a little food, watching an episode. And 10 minutes after I finish my grub, I'm out. <laughs> I'm mm. out, dude. I'm not in the... Uh, and Alexander's like, yo, go to bed. <laughs> it's like You six, had a long weekend, dude. 6.20, 6.25. So I went to bed. Yeah, and I slept like uh, like 11 hours. I felt really good, man. I needed that shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad, dude. <sighs> well, let's, let's do a little recap for those who don't know. Markstrom was fundraising with Gamers Outreach. Where did you go? Detroit? Uh, yeah, I flew into Detroit. Uh, we were at Eastern Michigan University um, at their convocation center, like where they play, you know, collegiate basketball. And uh, yeah, it was dope, man. Uh, had a couple of like, you know, dinner functions around the Ann Arbor area. Um, it's nice. I, I like that area, man. It's, it's pretty dope. They are. Uh, they're really good with like entertainment and hospitality. And yeah. making cars. True and real. Um, the event itself was phenomenal. Definitely by far the best setup that they've ever had. Um, just better planned out, better, you know, better thought out in advance and uh, just made the lives of all the broadcasters over there like a lot easier than usual. So uh, mad appreciation wonderful. for that. Massive W. Um, kicked ass. You know, the goal was 500,000 for the weekend uh, and they raised 1.2 mil. So Damn. definitely a little over 1.25, actually. So Gosh. definitely a big old W uh, for the kids and bringing gaming to hospitals. And uh, yeah, man, it feels good for us to have been a part of it. My like, you know, my real aspiration was 14K this weekend. And we raised a cool 28 too. So feels good to double that. Um, Jeez. Yeah, just incredible, uh, generous showing from the community as always, annually. Uh, for gamers for giving so big feels good man they'll, they'll definitely go out and make a big impact uh for the kids out there and uh yeah man special weekend glad to be a part of it and and so you played some games the first day and then the second day we played some games together yeah we did we uh, looking back on it so we played rocket league you're not a rocket league player and you were talking big game obviously i yeah. smacked you Oh, it but, was it was embarrassing when I crushed you out <laughs> despite all your practice, but it's fine. Okay. <laughs> anyway, back to reality world. Um, when we played together, yeah, we had some chemistry. Of course, I man. I sent Abe a clip or a timestamp. Mm. Abe, would you mind bringing that up? What do we got, bro? We it's got just a, a quick, you, just you a want, quick you thing. You want the last one that you sent, right? That timestamp one. Yeah, I believe so. What was the first <laughs> the first one you could play after? Well, the first one, we'll, yeah, we'll we'll touch base on that one after. Uh, but this is the one that you're talking about. Hey, there it is. There it is. There Let's it is. see what yeah, we me, got. Let me Ooh. mute it. Hold on. Good job. Um, yeah, yeah, because there's no uh, there's. So I'm dribbling the ball down, and I go eat up, eat up, eat up, and you come in and say I'm eating, and you slam that ball. In the goal, dude. I mean, that was that was that was like a, a cross right there, right into the corner. That was dude, coordinated. It's good it chemistry. Good strike. Really you know, good chemistry. These plays off the walls here. Yeah, I mean, you you surprised me with your Rocket League ability from not playing for like five years. Once you can fly, so, you can fly, bro. Eh. Not well, <laughs> but you can get up there. I was watching this earlier, just some clips, and yeah. there were so many times where you're like, "We're good. All right, we're not good." <laughs> that's the thing about rocket league man things will change in just a split second it's, it's crazy like that you know what i mean 
<laughs> what up? <laughs> hey, the other clip. Can we? Are we not gonna be able to hear the audio in the other clip? Because that's can play the... the audio in all of them. I mean, if you want me to play, it, that's the uh, music that's the Rocket League these, clip. Right? You do have music blasting, but what's the worst that can happen on YouTube? We get not demonetized because we're not monetized. Yeah, that's true. It, well, it, so yeah. if you're if we're talking about this clip here yes um, yep this is the clip let me start this one take it back from the top like, i will say that, you know this? at times your guys uh your guys yeah your guys communication got a little confusing no it's perfect uh, so, God. i had to do that i thought he was coming up my ass i was coming huh? <laughs> that's it, that's I didn't even freaking... <laughs> in the moment i'm like what uh-huh <laughs> I was coming. Hey, good comment. Best good part comment. is, good the best part is, you see who clipped that slump? <laughs> good clip, bro. Good clip. Oh, all that to say. Well, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. The way I play Rocket League gets a little, uh, gets a little hairy. The communication is, you know, you say in a certain way, and it's okay. In hey, Rocket League, it's okay. Heavy offense. Slums yeah. Heavy offense. Heavy guy. offense guy. Yes. Yeah. You gotta score goals to win game. Let them know. <laughs> <laughs> um but it was it was a wonderful weekend i had a great time as well so thank you for having me oh and, yeah uh, glad you could great uh, work, hang dude. out for the day it's fun i i'm <laughs> super happy to see you doing this stuff and i'm glad that it was a very successful weekend for you and the community yep um Shout okay out to those guys too because you know at times when you have a community that doesn't seem like it's always the biggest in size always shows up mark's community always shows up always does great for these kinds of causes i mean Twenty-eight thousand for for the group that we had. It's impressive to say the least. Yeah, I'm Incredible. very proud of everybody. Very impressive. All right, enough of the. Hey, what'd you do this last weekend? What did I do this last yeah, weekend? Yeah, you go on. Uh, uh, you go on vacation. <laughs> no, no, that's this I didn't weekend. Go on vacation. It's this oh, weekend. That's this I'm weekend. going to a bad. bachelor party. Weekend, so. <laughs> last weekend, no. Last weekend, I was at home watching you and, and participating in the uh, in the stream. So hell yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. What do you say, boys? You want to get into the real stuff? Let's cross right into it. Hey, what do we got, dude? We got some angry gamers this week. Mm. So roll the clip. Roll the clip. As soon as I. Right there. There it is. <laughs> there we go. First try, dude. <laughs> First try, dude. Okay. All right, what do we got? All right, well, what we got this week is we're coming after a company that we've came after before, and that's Ubisoft. And oh, that's because gosh. of their upcoming title announced Star Wars Outlaws, which is a single-player open-world RPG in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> and nice. people are pissed off. There's a, lot, there's a lot of layers to this onion, okay? Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of different things to peel back here. Okay. For starters... Uh, they announced the they have the the pre-order stuff up for the game uh, that just went out kind of recently and the pre-order includes three editions in addition to uh, they have a um, like a, a monthly subscription now to Ubisoft services okay you would also get the game through and I put the pricing up on the other screen here but uh, you know to, the, there's three three primary editions that you could buy out right the standard edition at 69.99 the gold edition which in, in addition to the two things that come with the standard edition, you get three days of early access as well as the first season pass, uh, which includes two DLCs. So that's right. We're already game is not launched yet. It actually doesn't come out to August. We already have two planned DLCs that you're getting for a, a season pass single for player RPG. Correct. For a single player RP, open world RPG. And then I finally, you have the ultimate edition, uh, which is one hundred and twenty nine ninety nine which includes the same as the gold edition plus two skin bundles and a digital art book. I would say, I would argue that having the, being a single player game and having the external purchases is more ethical than having it be a multiplayer game and making some of the external stuff purchases. Because then it's pay to win. purchases have the potential to have other people have a bad time, that's yeah. true. I, yeah. I agree mm -hmm. from that perspective for sure. Um, however, this is like trying to juice a lemon, dude. Of and course. my God, is it a lemon? <laughs> of course. We're oh, looking is this single game player, you're thinking? For single player RPGs in general, right? Okay. If we, let's look at the latest one by 
quote unquote the most prolific single player RPG creator in the world, Bethesda, right? Is it Bethesda? B E T H. Bethesda. Okay. Bethesda. 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 Yeah, both of these. Both of these Thesdas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. So, I mean, they come out with uh, Starfield. Right? Yeah, Starfield. Starfield. Yep. Yep. Uh, such a piece of junk that I didn't even properly learn the name of it. Mm. Now we're looking at, quote unquote, one of the, we'll call it one of the least celebrated studios of the modern era of gaming, Ubisoft, which pretty much everyone and their mother knows is going to present you a hunk of junk. That's sad because that. That rel that modern era quote that you just did was actually factual. Because I you know, grew up because with... they used to crank out some heaters yeah. once upon a time. Yeah, man. Well, uh, and there's Rainbow no doubt about it. Like I can't. All the Rainbow Six games. Yeah, man, they're all. Yeah. Old ACs. <sighs> yep. Unfortunate. It is unfortunate, man. Um, mm -hmm. it's just it, it's a shame. And so we're looking at what I would consider to be. A data genre, at least one that no one is doing well right now, even if you're the top dog. And a big part of that is because they get released and it's not a complete game. It's not ready. It's the same reason that Cyberpunk was not a success for so long and, in my opinion, still isn't. Um, I, think, I think that is complete in the modern day, though. It's an embarrassment I, I think is what it model, is. that's the model, dude. <laughs> oh, it's definitely the model. It's the model because they know that they can come out with these pre-order packages and schling you a bunch of FOMO. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, yeah. Well, oh, am I not getting the whole thing if I don't get this and that? No, the hell you're not. You're probably going to have to wait an extra week to play the game if you don't pay the juicer version. You're not going to get the DLCs, which should have been in the base game to begin with. Your Correct. experience is going to be worse as a result, 100%. Mm. So you're handcuffed into paying at least $110. And we talked about a $70 game these days in the most recent episode is a quadruple A price. And if you are going to come out, come at us with a quadruple A price, you better give us a quadruple A game and let me be the first to tell you, I don't think this is going to be it. <laughs> I don't think this is it, Slum. Nice. Well, did you read the season pass too that they brought up, Mark? What it says it includes. No, right? read it off. It's like, so the Star Wars out Al Star Wars Outlaws season pass includes two DLCs that will release after launch. Keep exploring the world of Star Wars Outlaws with all new stories, quests, and areas to discover. The Jabba's Gamut exclusive mission available at launch, and the Kessel Runner character pack featuring additional cosmetics for Kay and Nick. So, right off the bat, right, it's like. They're, they're, it's a single player story driven RPG and they're not going they to give you story that's already content. created C correct it's, it's wild to, to have DL and they're giving this a $40 value you ever consider right? I mean, providing value before the ask that's, that's crazy so yeah. what if you were to buy a game what is the value what is the hourly value it's different for everyone. What's the number? It's different for everyone. You know, you consider your finances. It's a part of it. You consider how much free time you have. It's another part of it. Sure. Um, because I, I don't huge, put big value, part. the latter part, which people don't yeah. often think about, is how much free time do I have? Yeah. So if you give me, you know, 60-hour game and 45 of it is filler because oh. you wanted to be able to sell a quote-unquote 60-hour play experience, I'm going to be pissed. I don't have time to play that. And I know it's going to be trash because it's mm. all the filler. And so if you give me 15 hours of killer for the same price, and that's the game, I'm a million times happier. So it really depends. Like, are you trying to make the experience special? Most of the time, that answer is no these days. And that is just absolutely gut-wrenching as a lifelong video game enthusiast frustrating and it's this trend this trend of having your your dlc ready before your launch to me is just this the worst trend that just has to go away 
If you're making that stuff, it should be part of the game that you release. Downloadable content should be, we've released a game, it was successful, we we created more stuff after the fact because it was such a successful because IP. Because you or liked game. it. And we Correct. are willing to trade more fair value for your fair income. Correct. And and Not, these slimy, we're gonna sell this incomplete. These slimy shit bags. I have no problem saying it. These slimy <laughs> shit bags expect <laughs> to be treated the same as FromSoft putting out Elden Ring, which is the most nonstop heater content. For every hour possible that you could put in nonstop, amazing exploration, combat, cutscenes, boss fights, gear collection, secret finding, you name it. And what did they do? They gave us the entire game. They patched and updated any potential problems immediately. And here we are years later with a anti highly anticipated DLC that everyone who bought the base game is going to buy and play because it's more, more amazing juice. Yep. And it's like, these studios think that they're in the same category. You're not. I got news, you're not. You're not even close. It is, and, but they, but they, it's very clear that they feel this way because of the price tag they're trying to put on their game. And man, they, they are so oblivious to community sentiment. And to an extent, they surely do not care, right? Because if, if this works, if this nets them more money, even if it's from less people, then selling to more people, making more people happy and more people fans, like, you, they keep shortchanging their fan base repeatedly until there isn't going to be one. They've already sullied mm -hmm. the Ubisoft name into the, the dirt, right? Uh, it's the laughing stock of the industry. And so here we go again. I'm sure they're going to give us another reason to, to be distasteful. <laughs> I mean, it's not like my comments uh, on UB over the years have been unfounded. It's just a pure uh, response to what we've been provided. And um, I'm as disappointed as they come. I mean, it's just, it's such a shame. So, you know, this week, I'm not looking for the positivity spin. Put me in the gamers are pissed because Ubisoft <laughs> sucks. That's where I'm at. I, I think uh, uh, there's a couple things. I want to unpack that. So they're not unpack just shortchanging their people. They're shortchanging them and they're charging them more. And the more customers you... that. Businesses go in this vicious cycle with, as they lose revenue, they need to, they, they have to boost revenue. They're ripping out their hair. How can we boost revenue? Inevitably, a lot of companies say, let's just charge more. That is a vicious, vicious cycle Easy way to out, fall bro. into. The next thing that I think about is, if a game launches and it's already got DLC, that means they were creating this stuff at the same time. So that means they're moving mm -hmm. slower to on the main game. As opposed, if they were just building the main game, they'd be moving faster. But they're moving slower because they're building this extra stuff. At a certain, uh, there's and a the certain... main game could get the polish that it actually needs, Correct. which it inevitably won't before yes. launch date here. Yep, mm -hmm. that's that's what I exactly. Their all their bandwidth is not going into the main game. So to make it the best experience that it can be for the consumer, which should be their only objective. Maybe <laughs> it, that's that is ninety eight percent of it, in my opinion. Okay, I'll take and that. the I do agree with starting early on the other stuff, but not at the not if you're dropping dog shit. Starting early on the other stuff, if you can, if you know what's going to be the heater. Starting early on the other stuff can put you ahead, and timing is everything when you launch products and when you launch services, all that stuff. But not at the expense of it's a it's a it's a walk you have to do. Like it's a dance. I, I have to put this much bandwidth over here and this much bandwidth over here. What I would not do is probably say launch the game and show people we already have something ready. I'd probably launch the game, not that expensive, and then like very early, here's the DLC. Yeah, but 
I don't, I don't yeah, know. I mean, they have a na- they already have funny. names for it. Like, I mean, that's it's the just cla- purely the a slap part. in the face to the consumer to have a single player <laughs> RPG game with preemptive DLC. That's a slap in the face, no matter how you cut it. Like, there's not like we know that this is like not ethical, and we're gonna show you that we're doing it, and we're just gonna spit in your face. Like that. That's what they're doing here. Like, there's no. Well, there's no look at the value look at. they assign to that mark. Forty dollars for for that for the, the two additional DLCs. Well, hold on, Jad and season pass. Jad and Chad has a has a interesting take. Do you think they built the game and then we're like, let's split this bad boy? Let's just cut it up and slang it all. <laughs> that wouldn't shock me either. Yeah, I, I mean, mean that. But I mean, that's obviously what they've done here, right? I mean, essentially, yeah. that that is what they've done. Yeah, and, but it's, it's like buying drugs and the guy's like well actually we've cut this significantly we've stomped all over this uh yeah half of that's baking powder good luck what you know what i mean Uh, and and, i mean but it's like but doing it in the face of like the consumer be like yeah you're gonna buy this it's crazy (laughs) it's crazy man it's crazy and so and so the bot the bottom line is like Yes, this is normalized. Uh, it's normalized because to an extent it works. To an extent, they're still making money. And if you are out there pre-ordering this dog shit, shame on you. Yeah, shame that's what I was going to say. You. Yeah. Bro, you're the problem. Some... You're the reason this is happening. Because you're that's the, the only way the they get away with this repeatedly. <laughs> is your fault. There's, There's some... zero reason to pre-order a game in 2024. Find someone who's going to give you an honest feedback Watch them play it. See if it's shitty. Before you buy, how do you have money sitting around in 2024 in this economy to pre-order this dog shit from Ubisoft? What are you doing? That's, that's, a, that's a, a strong take right there. That is correct. What are you doing? What are you doing, man? What do you, you should be spending money on other stuff like uh, the drugs that Markstrom was just talking about. I'm just joking. Or, we co- do or coffee. Um, or coffee. <laughs> um, the, my drug of choice. What about what about this diehard Star Wars guy, dude? I used to be. Really? L- Ride or die. Trash, dude. I watched the okay. I watched the original okay. trilogy on VHS like once a week as a kid. Mm-hmm. All three once a week. Uh, they were, they were on permanent rotation. That Dang. box that they came in was beat to shit. All me. <laughs> my fault. <laughs> And I, so, I take, I wear that as a badge of honor. Um, so how does this make you feel as a, as a previous diehard? I mean, I got into, I got into the story through the films, and then I played. I watched obviously the next three, and they were okay. Uh, I played Empire Divided, mm-hmm. uh, Rogue Squadron, okay. Pod Racer. Oh, oh, good one. Jedi Knight Academy. God dang, dude. Uh, KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic, SWOTOR, Star Wars oh, the Old Republic. Oh my gosh. And I like, I beat these games. They beat the one on N64 and then that. Try the thousands of hours I put into Star Wars Galaxies, the greatest MMO of all time. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm, I'm a Star Wars guy, man, through and through. Dude. But I'll be damned if I didn't enjoy an ounce of anything Disney has put out for Star Wars. <laughs> Actually, that's that's a lie. I did enjoy Andor. Andor was good, but uh, having having watched all the other stuff, it's just it's just so far removed. It's not for me, and that's okay. Dude. I don't expect like I think part of it is that not. They, I see a lot of people making the argument just in general about how like Star Wars is to an extent for kids we've grown up and with the content didn't but actually i think the content has been retargeted even younger through yeah. disney has been yes. like the original three were not necessarily for kids you could argue is like somewhere for like teens and like mid-20s all right and if it stayed that way i think they would have had like a better uh stronghold on a wider audience but instead they've definitely retargeted it even younger and uh you know it's a hard watch it's a hard watch these days. To me, it's just not, um, it's not the same tender love and care. Uh, and it's, uh, 
there's a certain grittiness to Star Wars that people really like and appreciate. And so what, whenever there is content that comes out in that vein, I think it ends up being a lot better, like Andor was. Um, Jar Jar so, Binks was the start of the downfall. <laughs> the Sith Lord himself. Um, I, I think that um, Star Wars fans are, th- are always thirsty for a new game because it's been a while since we've gotten a good one. Um, KOTOR was probably... KOTOR, SWG era, somewhere in there is like the last good one that we received. I think people did enjoy um, the Dark Souls style game that came out. Jedi Survivor, right? Yeah. I didn't play... I mean, I I tried it. I didn't like it that much. As like a diehard Dark Souls guy, it kind of like... That kind of ruined it for me, but... um, Yeah, I I don't know, man. Like... This is flexing. This is exploiting a popular IP to sell your product that uh, I just, at the end of the day, have no faith in. So, I mean, like, may, I hope they prove me wrong, right? Their, their monetization model is in line with every sc- scummy thing that they've done in the past and really just lays the bricks of the road towards a game that's going to be trash. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Time will tell. We'll see. Is uh, Abe, we got a link for this bit, uh, this game. Do you want to show us something in this game? Uh, just a couple of things with this. Uh, I have like you know, kind of the website, and what you're looking at right now is the link that uh, really is for the pricing. Okay. There's just a couple of other quick bits on this too, and it's uh, we pop over to Twitter because uh, there's also a big conspiracy theory to tie this all up in a little bow. Big conspiracy theory too that uh, the folks at Disney and Lucas Arts are a little worried that this game is not going to do very well okay. uh, due to some of the initial feedback to what's going on. And there's like a full on bot campaign that's like going out there and 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 basically spinning a lot of things about the game in the positive direction, which is very on brand with Disney and the Star Wars universe and what they've done with some of the movies that haven't gone over well. So people are kind of a little upset about that too, that Disney's impl- basically deploying bots to spin how people are Why looking at this game. Why don't you read some of these? Like, give, give me like three yeah, of click them. Click into there, dude. So it's Ubisoft Star Wars Outlaw launch. Here we go. Wow, that's going to be epic. Like it's all like very. It's not very natural, and they're very similar in how these things are formatted. Yeah, they're and, AI. And, they're and AI. I, I read them. They're AI uh, for sure. The for sure. Um, they're all AI. It's very obvious. Like these are all like very similar paragraphs using the same keywords, and it's all like the same bullshit, right? They're very obviously bots. But my question is, <laughs> where's your boy Elon Slummy on this? As someone who has already had like you know taking it up with Disney in the past at ends with them, you would think he'd be on this shit. I think, um, I think when people get, uh, harmed, that's probably when it goes to the top of the list. Yeah. That's unfortunately fair. some people. Are, yeah. I mean, where with bots? Yeah. You got to get rid of the bots. What's the conspiracy? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> oh. it's, it's that, uh, they Quote believe unquote. that this game is not going to do well is what the conspiracy is. Well, I mean, uh, I I think that's just I think that's probably fact. I don't know what the conspiracy is. These look pretty AI generated to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but all right, no, but but you're right. Where he uh, Elon when he took over Twitter, now X, one of his biggest things was he showed us how many bots there were, yeah, and he's going to work on the bots. So get the freaking bots off the platform, bro. Yep. The, I'll be honest, as all like a lifelong too. Twitter user. The bots have never been worse at, than they are right now, yeah. by a long shot. If That's I see one dude. more like titties and bio post <laughs> on these, bro, it's crazy. Every well, single post that I see has a bot response. It never used to be like that. So well, let's, let's, the fight's not going blue well. Check marks. Let's do this. Let's clip this. Elon, I am a big supporter. I always defend you on this podcast. I think you're doing great things. Markstrom, my co-host here, great guy. But he is he's a little more critical, as he should be. Get the get rid of the bots. Don't let me keep defending you, bro. Let me keep supporting what you're doing. Get rid of the bots, dude, or, or at least update us. All right? That's all I'm asking, man. Keep doing good things and let us know how the bot thing goes. All right. We'll update the audience when Elon gets back to us. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what um, else we got? I here's mean, another I'm update. I'm sick of talking about Ubisoft. They're the worst. All right. Yeah, yeah. Get, let's let's keep it going. Well, let's let's move on to what I I consider some high quality gaming content, and I actually want to give Mark uh, a little bit more of a spotlight in addition to the charity stuff we talked about earlier. But Mark put out a very cool <laughs> Escape from Tarkov video, uh, and I have I have the video here and stuff too. But I, why don't you explain? <laughs> kind of this video a bit mark and what your your kind of your experiment was here and how it played out i appreciate it man you know uh having revisited tarkov i really wanted to take a different approach to content in game right as far as i'm concerned in the realm of combat and pvp the game's never been worse than it is right now but i love playing the game because it's a really fun open world sandbox for memes right uh there's just so much to do in game as you know it's it's been development since uh late 2016 it's been a while man and uh they've really cranked out a lot of content to put in this game it's deep it's definitely deep it's built on a terrible terrible uh infrastructure but it's deep um and there's a lot of like social experimentation that makes the game really fun these days uh shout out to um the cycle frontier for basically and like pushing the envelope and enlightening the days or the the bohemia bohemia i've been i'm playing a lot of daisy i'm sorry battle state State devs um uh, that voip is crucial so critical to extraction games just as bohemia pointed out that it's a crucial to open world survival so as tarkov somewhere in the middle of those two things um it just makes sense and the potential for memorable experiences memorable unique player interaction is always the best parts of these games right it, 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 at a certain extent it doesn't matter whether you win or lose in the raid right i just want a fun time and uh yeah the the best path forward for that right now in tarkov is to is to yap right the get in there and void with the homies uh whether they, whether they're friendly not friendly you're still gonna have like a funny experience and so we really wanted to focus on this kind of content, and uh, we've done this fun thing in the past for the cycle uh, and for Dark and Darker, where we record a soundboard of our friend Samantha uh, just, you know, <laughs> get, going through the motions of, like, the natural how do conversations occur in these types of games. And uh, on, my, on my Go XLR, I have 12 options here. And so I have to pick and choose, you know, like, how can I have a full, complete conversation to where it feels believable, um, but preemptively think them out and get them recorded and then use that to, to interact with people in game. And uh, our thought process was, if you're playing Tarkov in 2024, you're probably not getting out of the house much. Um, and, uh, you know, you may be potentially overly excited about running into someone of we'll call it the opposite faction or a body type two um, in, in Escape from Tarkov. <laughs> and, uh, and so we wanted to finesse these individuals into basically making our game easy, our raids easy, our tasks easy. And man, did it go well. Uh, so well that we actually had to keep pushing the envelope to figure out, okay, like I can basically get whatever I want using this absolutely demon technology. Uh, let's see how far this rabbit hole goes. You know what I'm saying? Let's cook this noodle. And, uh, man, is it al dente. I highly recommend checking out the video, and I appreciate the shout, Abe. Yeah, this video is great. And, I mean, uh, I could, if you want me to, I could play a little bit in the beginning when you're ta- using the soundboard with some of these folks. But Show all the guys dropping the gear up in the... Yeah, that's <laughs> the what I wanted to throw. do. So, oh, hold on, let me unmute this site, too. Uh, did you call these guys the... simps yet? Did you? Did you... Say that uh, here. No need no. to name call. Maybe oh, okay. I could leverage their voice. To oh, my is that a word? So I did, <laughs> and it made my raids way easier. I'm just looking for any loot. I'm really poor. Oh, you are. Oh, here, here, here. Take whatever you want in this backpack. Now, the first guy gave me all of his stuff just like that, but it won't all be that easy, right? Oh, oh. oh my God. A lot of high price tags on some of that loot that's coming out, spitting to the ground for me there. I'm curious. Oh, me to extract. All right, don't give him the whole thing. All right. I'm not going to. I'm not going All to. All right. 
I'm and curious maybe, maybe if you go to the link. This will be uh this will be put in the description below this yeah. video if you want to check it out. Absolutely. I'm curious if these guys like when they drop in this stuff, if they had any feeling of like, dang, I need this, but you know, I gotta do it. Gotta do it for them. No. I don't think you don't think so. I think they're excited they were like, about the opportunity. Lady, I would be happy to help you, lady. <laughs> yeah, tips, fedor. Oh god, yeah, it's good, dude. man. I mean, oh it's it's gosh. you know, it's not it's in game, bro. It's, not it's in game because they you know they feel good about it. There's a, there's an exchange here. <laughs> What's the exchange? That they have a positive interaction with someone that's of the opposite faction. Where does it go though? Right into their souls. It's part of your dusha. What that's, the that's the fuck Russian word is a for dusha. soul. The Russian word for soul. It's a very um. It's a woozy. It's a wazi. It's a fugazi. <laughs> I pulled that. I pulled that out with Trisha the other day. She was like, "What is that from?" Don't worry about it. <laughs> the oh, inner machinations anyway, of my mind. This video is an absolute banger. Definitely. Check yeah, check it out, out everybody. Check it um, out. If you enjoy uh, any and all of the uh, editing. Our our main man uh, Dominic here was uh, instrumental up? towards the the high quality production. So let's let's get it banging, boys. We let's got get it uh, we yeah we got some we got some fun stuff that we're working on. So keep keep your eyes on the YouTube. We should link the, that your channel to this channel, by the way. Um. Oh, yeah. So what? Oh, I'm excited about this next one, Abe. Hey, what do we got next? Yes, yeah, cool. right, we got a, some pretty cool new AI tech uh, that allows you to essentially. Uh, take existing video production and replace people, uh, for lack of a better way to describe it. Yeah. Uh, so what we have here in this first introduction of it is somebody took uh, rapper Little Yachty and him coming out on the stage doing a performance at a concert and Great replaced him with Joaquin this is, Phoenix's This might Joker. be one of the most legendary intros to a, a performance I've 100%. ever seen filmed. Um, I mean, the, so the beautiful thing about this, filmed. too, is like this intro to his performance already was very viral. Yes. Right. Like, people ate this up. Why? Yep. Because it's actually sick. Like, it's I sick. don't enjoy little yachty music. Uh, this got I, me hype, dude. I know. Every time I see it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's dope. So uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this. Yeah. So, then, so, so there's a top, top and bottom video here. It's the little yachty walkout. He's like, uh, fist pumping and starts swagging, and he goes up the walkway. Uh just skipping along and on yep. the top is the joker uh doing the exact same dance like in the red suit the walking phoenix vibe and it composed is frame into, for frame composed into and over him in the original video and it just looks like it's the joker coming out and it is insane i mean it's spot on um wild. it's like it's so good that it captured the movements so ridiculously yes. perfect it kind of blew my mind Yes, it, that's, look, it that's looks the natural. biggest thing. So, it really does. <laughs> I don't know about that. If you, there's well, some yeah, I mean, it doesn't in. look natural, and you can tell it's overlaid. <laughs> it's, but. it's listen. I have a certain amount of like you know removal from the specifics there, but yeah, man, it looks sick. So it is sick. So this is Viggle AI. Okay. And I'm actually in their Discord, and I think you can use it for free. When you say Viggle, do you mean Vigil? No, I mean G-G. V-I-G-G-I-L. V-I-G-G-L-E. Viggle. Viggle. It is Viggle. All right. Viggle. I just make sure. I hear you. Yeah, I Viggle mean, you the education system. You got to check. <laughs> Go ahead. So what they do, actually... Um, I got a, these other things you sent me, right? Yeah, do yes, you to bring so don't, don't send it yet. But basically, you get a picture, and a, you give it a video. And you can either... Put me in that video, take out the background, make it white background, or make it a green background for yeah. the green screen memes, or put it in the video. So it's taking one picture and making it a video. What I've, so, what I've seen in this Discord is it gets a little wonky, but there's some good practices in case you guys in chat or listening want to use this thing. It's, it's super easy. Abe, hey, bring up a picture real quick. Any so, picture of the one that you sent me? The girl picture. So this is a girl. Zoom out just a bit. You can see. You can see her. Oh wait, no, you print. No, I hit. I hit the white hit, 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 hit this for later. Oh my god! Um, so <laughs> you see her arms. You see her face. 
Most importantly, you see her feet, the shoes she's wearing. Why, why give, are the feet most important, Slum? Because you you need to give the AI everything. Don't let it guess what what is this person wearing. A lot of people are just sending top half pictures. I see. Give give the AI everything to work with. Okay. Even the the hands are probably a little wonky in this one. Okay. But when you give it everything to work with, and when you don't ask a lot of it. You can get very, very promising results. Super good stuff that you can use in stream, like green screen stuff. Check this this video out. From this girl's picture, they were able to make this little video. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta, I actually have to, it's not letting me put it in my browser like this one. <laughs> you do whatever you gotta do, man. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to do it. But anyway. It, it is a super simple video. I mean, we got to show some type of video here, but it's it's a it's about a five second dance video, and it ha it's just a simple movement, but it turns it into something really really good. Like it it looks oh, really good because you're not it. asking a lot of it. Right. You're giving it the feet, you're giving it the hands, you're giving it the face. You're not asking it to so turn around. If you don't around. give it the feet, are we getting potentially six toes? Like what are we talking? Oh, you're getting a blob of foot, but it looks like it's wearing the sandals. Right. You're wearing, like it's it, this thing's not this thing's not like high fidelity mm -hmm. yet, photorealism. But right, what's really good is it tracks the motion in a video. That's that what? stuff is so crazy. We we talked about this a little bit before, but being able to extract motion data yeah. from one f flat video file. Yeah, it's nice. Like. Dude, people in studios have quarter million dollar motion tracking systems right. where you get wear all these balls, and now you're able to pull motion tracking data from a flat file. Yeah, that's nuts, man. It's crazy, dude. And this I have to share the screen differently in order to. It'll break the. It'll probably it'll break, break the it. Screen. It'll break it. If I want to um, show the video. But it, it's it's really good. Um, go to go to Viggle go to Viggle Twitter. See if they got some stuff in there, dude. This one, this Joker one, is yeah. interesting because it's really good, and I see a lot of Joker ones in the Discord, and they're not that good. Mm. So I'm wondering, like, eh. there you go. See, th there you go, right there. Pull that white screen up, yeah. right there. Yeah. You see how it, you're not asking him to turn around. You're not asking him to do anything crazy. Right. That is so usable if you're a streamer. Every time you subscribe, you you come up and you're dancing. Yeah, no doubt, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. And and you can you can even chop out the Viggle. I'm not saying don't give him props, but like, dude, it's in the corner. It's not even yeah. close. It's so simple. Can we get me up on screen? Uh, really hundred percent. Oh, dude, can we watch? Dude, yeah, what's this can we watch one? This looks pretty cool. One? Eh, doesn't do well with the color. No, but no. like, dude. That is insane, man. Yeah, it's pretty insane. nuts. Insane. Look, the feet can disappear. It kind of knows where they're supposed to go. Right. Oh, we just stepped on that. You just kind of walked right through that one thing, but we're going to ignore that. <laughs> that <we> do. <laughs> we can't win them all. Abe, Abe loves playing Twitter videos a quarter of the size on full screen, by the way. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm the worst it, at that. I'm the worst <laughs> at that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> This this stuff is really good, and guys, You're I think it's free. Making sure that we were hyping it up appropriately. You don't want to get too zoomed yeah. in, Slum, as we you said. Look, so it pulled them from the video in yeah, that top yeah. one. So you can even get a clean plate if you just want to use it to give you a clean plate, right. which is tremendous amount of work you normally have to do. Yeah, it's nuts. It's man, what? and I think it's free, so guys. Let's, let's think it through. If if we did, if we just took the Kingsman scene that we've done, right? Yeah, and we took the guy. And we had an image of me. I'm wondering. Let me look at the Discord. I'm wondering if you have to prio the person. I would that, assume so. If there's more well, than one I, person I didn't in the see, scene, I didn't see any of that. Oh. I didn't see anyone doing videos that have more than, more one, than one person. One person. But I mean, they you knew to it's replace it with Lil Yachty. One. Yeah, I like, get all that. these people back here, right? This I isn't mean, a like, good example. The, yeah. the Yachty one's close because there are people backstage right. when he comes out. Um, Interesting. Something to think if, about if, for the future. Yeah. I, that is very interesting. I, I think sound maybe. Again. I don't see. Yeah, I don't see them putting Pryo on on any single person. Right. I mean, it, he. I mean, it, he. I, I get don't it. Know, there's I, people in this background. I get there. it. I mean, kind of work. I get it. I'm just looking right here, and I don't see. I'm looking at the prompts. I'm looking at. 
uh, what they have to type in. I don't see them picking someone. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I'll look into it a little deeper, and we'll we'll get we'll okay. get cooking. We'll get cooking. It'll Still really cool, tech. regardless. Absolutely. This no is, doubt. This is great stuff, dude. And even better, I think. Don't quote me, but I think it's free. That's nutty. Like guys. This nutty. <laughs> bro, you can literally, dude. Go if you are in the city or in the suburbs or whatever. Go around to all your realtors and say, "I, I my business model is to make you do funny stuff." I, every week, I give you four clips of you dancing on a green screen to use in social media. Like, uh, it's uh, fifty bucks a week. Nothing crazy. Bro, you can make your businesses off these little things, dude. Cooking, 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 and it's free. I think. Don't quote me, but I think it's free. <laughs> it definitely won't be for a while. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because as Markstrom says, value, then ask. Eat. Especially you keep giving people good ideas on how to monetize it. They're <laughs> definitely going to try and monetize it on their end. They're in real. <laughs> but if you're going to use it, make sure you give it everything. Give it the shoes. Give it the feet. Give it the hands. Give it the head. Especially the feet. Especially the feet. <clears throat> All right. What Famous. else we got, dude? Uh, well, just real quick, too. I don't know if you guys watched the trailer. I actually didn't watch the trailer. I know it launched, but this... this uh. This was particularly fitting with the Joaquin Phoenix Joker because Ooh. the uh, official what trailer, say? Joaquin Phoenix, Joaquin, 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 Joaquin. I was going Joachim Noah. You know Joachim yeah. Noah, the okay. basketball player. Yep. I was going off of that. Um, oh, that's like Jow. Yeah. 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 Uh, Go Gators. So he. The, <laughs> the, the trailer Go for uh, Joker Foyadu. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the the second version of a iteration of his Joker, uh, just launched uh, with I believe it's Lady Gaga is playing Harley Quinn, and the whole thing's a musical, which had me kind of, to be honest with you, a little disinterested in in, in the concept because uh, I didn't didn't like the idea of a musical. But I haven't watched the trailer. I don't know if you guys have. I haven't yet. Uh, we can pull I was it up going here to tomorrow or... morning uh, for stream. Okay. Nah, save it. Save it for stream. Sorry, okay. guys. <clears throat> Um, so I did check that it. one out. That's another nice, cool little crossover IP in, in the content area uh, with more and more Batman content being mm -hmm. created. We'll, we'll talk about it next podcast. It's not coming out yet. Yeah. Um, all right. What else? I think we got all one right. more or what? I got a couple more things in the docket still. Uh, this one, you know, I tried, I've been trying to be very positive today on a lot of different stuff outside of that. What are gamers angry about? Yeah. Uh, but this is another one that's probably not very positive. Uh, and that is the streaming platform Roku, who, which also makes, in addition to streaming devices, uh, TVs and things like that, yeah. just came out with a brand new patent that will allow them to show ads over anything that you plug into one of their TVs. Over a completely different <laughs> HDMI input, if you're playing on an Xbox and you're playing your Xbox game, they're able to bake in a superimposed ad over top of that. Correct. Horrifying. So the technology detects whether or not content was paused in any kind of way. So there's multiple pause detection. So if the video being displayed is static, if there's no audio, if the pause symbol is shown on the screen, if like there's a pause signal been, that's been received through a, a, a pass through remote control, something like that, the system's able to recognize those things, determine that it's been paused, identify objects that they could be replaced and filter in relevant ads. Horrifying. Who would shout be? out shout out nvidia shield on this uh on this topic uh i love it um not associated don't get any back end not a sponsor nvidia shield getting that device for my main tv in my house has been the best choice i've ever made even if you don't use the gaming capability on it to be able to stream the games from upstairs down to your downstairs tv and just play them even if you're not going to use that just as a uh, an app source as a smart app source, it is phenomenal, and it runs exactly how you would hope, like a Android-based um setup would, right? Like it's all very intuitive. You have full control over things, and not not everything is hidden behind, you know, like quote unquote polished UI UX, like an Apple device. Like it feels good to use if you are a PC user, and. Uh, you know, no, no shade. Sorry, Slum. Uh, on the Apple front, but it is so, <laughs> so good. If you feel similarly, I highly recommend it. Um, them filing this patent alone makes me never want to buy another Roku product. 
Like yeah, the fact that I this agree. is like their thought process for um the future it is just so terrifying. Like pass, 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 pass. I have a Roku TV out in the garage because it was cheap from Walmart. I'm not gonna put a nice TV in the garage. I just want to be able to yeah. watch some watch some shit while I do my cardio, you know, like I'm a simple man. Um and yeah, really rough. So I hope this never comes to fruition. Hopefully the pushback from the consumer is massive on this, as you would expect. But my God. I don't, I don't know if this could work. So say you're playing the new Star Wars game, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and an ad comes up over my Star Wars game. When it's paused. So you press pause first. It's detecting when the it's detecting when you pause to I play get, the ad. I get that. I'd okay. Uh, even if it was a tiny ad in the corner, like sure. It, so it's an ad when I'm playing my Star Wars game. Okay. So is Star Wars getting some of the revenue? No. No. Well, no. then I don't think as a developer, hopefully you say uh, no ad is ever going to appear on this game. They may not have the the choice. Get the mm -hmm. what? I hear That's you. Because the ad itself is not playing through the game. It's an overlay but on, it's a playing their, on top of their monitor. I hear you. You're, you're putting you're an right. ad in There's front of going someone. To be, they were not mm -hmm. going to be happy about it. No yeah. doubt. You're putting and an ad in front of everyone. someone who just spent $129 to play my game. Right. And I'm not getting a cut of that? Right. Oh, yeah. There's no way. It needs to happen. So everyone, uh, so all the all these big uh, companies that are listening right now, we know you are. If you're if you're NBC and you're Peacock and you're Hulu and you're all these streaming services, Ooh, you need to destroy this because you need to say we are not allowing Roku devices to have our apps on them. Then if they're going to play ads when our shit's paused, what happens when it's a competing ad too with like something that they are running as an ad spot? Like they, that, it's yeah. going to make it impossible for them to even have ads of their own if it can just be superseded. By some competitive uh service like that's like yeah. you know what i mean wild we need uh, the streaming services to get our backs on we, I don't, streaming I don't, services i don't ask you for much good luck yeah, no <laughs> i don't, don't i don't um i don't think they lack the capabilities of targeting and placement i think that that'll be very doable for them to not have to cross that bridge that you addressed i think the other thing is is going to be all these people are going to want ad revenue. So the people that you just asked to help you, Abe, I don't think they're going to be <laughs> helping. I think we need people with spines, people that don't want ads over over their games. But then what, what happens when There's Roku goes There's no way goes, Roku right. lets them have it, so they'll be at each other's throat regardless. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I don't know, man. I think so it's either don't play ads when I'm playing my Star Wars game, which makes no one money, or... When they play the Star Wars game, now we can run some ads. You want to split ad revenue? And they go, sure. Yeah, but there's not enough pie to go around. Because if your example is Star Wars game as a piece of art that is being displayed on a TV. Yeah. Now flesh that out for literally everything else that somebody could play on the TV. Yeah. There's not... <laughs> That the the world that exists where they're all getting a piece of the pie does is not a thing. Okay, I'll, I mean, I I would disagree, but it's I'm, not I'm even a thing say... like it, within like video games alone. Every every video game that's played on the TV is somehow going to get like a a piece of the pie. Absolutely not. They're not. Yeah, like how do they, how would they even know what you're playing? That's like, the uh... that's the interesting part. It's like, what if I'm literally just using an HDMI and like you don't even know what I'm plugged into, but you know something's there. A game cast. A game cast. <laughs> they, they will be able to pull no data. Well, maybe, maybe there's an AI that's that monitors the yep. screen and says, "Yeah, Star Wars game." Yep. Well, ex well, exactly. But it's 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 more so. It's like, oh, this thing isn't moving. I could fit an ad in here. Let me over. Like they, yeah. they, they there's don't no way give they a give a shit, shit with what's about on the what screen. you're playing. It's there's, just yeah. There's no way. This is just this is like absolutely horrifying and disgusting. That's why I wanted to bring this up on here because yeah. I read this and I was just instantly filled with hate towards Roku. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is some Ubisoft shit. Yeah, this is awful. This right here. Why, this is garbage. Why, you uh, see the Markiplier meme? No. And I hate this. 
That's my uh, my wife's mother has a Roku TV and it is garbage. It always shuts off. It's... Yes. I always looked at Roku like it was like a budget Netflix, but I guess they pivoted the model to like be a whole thing. Their streaming device is actually pretty nice. Like they, yeah, I have the, one of the their nice, individual streaming the higher devices. higher end streaming device works pretty well. <laughs> yeah, and now I want to throw it in the garbage because uh, yeah, I don't want to plug anything into it. <laughs> it's never been a, a platform for content. It hosts apps like Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it makes a non-smart TV a smart TV. It bridged that uh, gap while non-smart TVs came out. Now almost every TV you buy has that capability built in, but their tech is usually garbage, and you're better off using the Roku anyway. Yeah, uh, correct. So it's Roku's interesting. Got a clean which is UI, why it's very easy to download apps. It's pretty nice that way. Yeah, which is why I specifically say you know Nvidia Shield. Um, I just I. Uh, so glad that we went that route. Um, it's hype. Highly recommend. I'll have to check that one out. Yeah. Well, I hate to do this, boys, but I think that we have to end on that negative freaking note. Ain't that a bitch? Ain't that? Ain't that? Don't a look bitch. at it as a negative. We're informing the people, Slum. We're getting good information out We're there to the people the to troops. avoid this bullshit. We're starting the revolution, the anti-Roku <laughs> revolution. Yeah. We uh we talked about some good stuff this podcast, yeah, we dude. Did. It's all right. Some groundbreaking for all the, AI. For all the bad some ground- that they're out there doing. We're doing good, man. We are. And we got to start. We still have to do our. What's, what's our uh, game review website called? Uh, rotten Cabbages or something? Or rotten, Stinky or Cabbages? It? I don't know. It was stinky something cabbages. cabbages. Something. We got to do that, too. Um, I had a good time. So, Markstrom. Yes, sir. I know you just wrapped a gigantic weekend. But how about what what's coming next? You Anything think we interesting? Don't got in the hype stuff still coming next? <laughs> Who do you think I am? <laughs> what else we Holy got? Holy hell, the next two days are hype, dude. Uh <laughs> tomorrow is a uh instant classic marksman play. Oh starting at eleven AM Eastern. We're diving into two heaters. Uh one is called Oh Deer and the other is called Content Warning. Both of these mm. have been very popular in the uh, fun with your friends multiplayer space, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a good time. So uh, we're probably talking off up until then, and uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash Marsham. We're diving in with the rest of the team, myself, Doodly Boobs, the young Pope. It's going to be great. And then Friday is a makeup FBF where we do the media share, the, the bevies, shout out hashtag Voodoo Ranger. Hashtag live rangerously, hashtag ad. Uh, we're going to be sipping on those sweet, juicy teas, those hard-charged teas this Friday. I uh, got a brand new case. Thank you, Voodoo. Um, and we're playing uh, a game about climbing. A oh difficult boy. game about climbing. And that's not uh, my description. That's the title. Uh, a shout-out Bennett Foddy. You may recognize that name from Getting Over It. It is a very similar kind oh, of God. game. And... Uh, something tells me we'll be lucky if we have enough teas. Oh, God. I'll leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> media share turned on. Uh, I got a dope outfit for this Friday. I'm really excited for it. I've been ordering some weird shit to wear on FBFs, and this week is no uh, no different. Uh, so make sure you swing through twitch.tv slash Marsham. Good ass couple of days coming up. Thanks for asking. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. I'm excited for it. Abe! I'm uh this weekend you know shout out to a good friend of mine I won't drop his name or anything but my best friend's getting married nice. uh so we are celebrating him as the bachelor going to a bachelor party this weekend so I will not be around to moderate you officiating uh, it uh I'm not no I'm I'm in the wedding I'm not officiating mm-hmm. the wedding but the Can't bachelor party I'm kind of like helping organize and coordinate you know so oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm like, you know how it's like, I'm like the second guy. I'm not the best man. I'm like the second guy. Yeah, Nutra's like sense? the third backup for a groomsman, so I hear you. <laughs> I understand. Ah, made him rent a tuxedo. Oh. <laughs> out his ass. <laughs> ah, shit. Uh, well, so I'm- that's where I'm at this weekend. Unfortunately, I can't partake in FBF. It's one of my favorite days. Um, shout out once again to the community with the fundraising efforts this past weekend. That was amazing. Thank you for all that. But check out everything else over at twitch.tv slash Markstrom uh, because I can't and I'm, I'm sad I'm going to miss it. 
Good stuff, dude. I'm, I'm excited for you to get a little time away. Should be fun for you. My name is Slum or Dom. You can call me either. We do this podcast every week unless Markstrom has a baby or Abe goes on vacation. Thankfully, this time he's not going on vacation on Wednesday. We do it every week on Wednesday, and we have a great time. What I'm going to ask you, would you kindly subscribe to this channel? Would you kindly share this with your friends, your mom, your sister, your dad, your auntie, whoever? We have a great time here, and we want to bring that great time to everyone we can. So we'd really appreciate that. This has been another successful episode of The Plug Podcast, and we will see you next time. Deuces. Peace.